one-time pride of King Henry VIII's navy. That's our nautical postcard today, the Mary Rose in Portsmouth, Hampshire. Well, I never. The Mary Rose. Stuart, what was your part in bringing her up? My part in bringing her up was to attend to the ladies and gentlemen of the media on board the press vessel, watching the whole event. But prior to that, I was the fine supervisor on board the diving vessel. And what was the experience like? Because was it spooky? Was it scary? It was very, very exciting. I mean, when the first timbers broke the water for the first time in 437 years, this, there were sirens going off, people cheering. It was a fabulous experience. Lots and lots of water coming down, and I was quite intelligent when I walked in, wasn't I? She sure. certainly were. Because I said, is it because she's been underwater so long that if you bring her up and leave her in the air, would she split and shrink? Yes. The, all the wood is waterlogged, and if you let it dry out, the only thing holding the, the wood cell structure to, together is the pressure of the water within it. So you have to replace that with uh, a wax. And so we keep spraying them with a wax solution, and very gradually that will replace the water inside the wood cells and bulk them out. So when we let her dry out, eventually, she won't spit or crack. And how long have you got to keep doing that with wax? Uh, 15 to 20 years, roughly. And how long have we been going? Uh, about three years now. Did she actually fight any battles? Yes, she was involved in three wars against the French. Um, in 1513, she fought an absolutely ferocious battle uh, near Brest and was said to have crippled the French uh, Admiral's ship with a single shot which wrecked their mainmast. Um, she also took part in another one in 1522, again invading France, and of course the final battle in the Solent where she was lost. Why did she sink? Well, that's a very good question. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of different stories. The French say their galley sunk her with gunfire, which is extremely unlikely. The best evidence we can put together is that she sank by accident a handling mistake with possible indiscipline amongst the crew or misunderstanding the orders. A very simple mistake that any yachtsman could make, but with rather more severe consequences. But obviously destiny, fate, call it what you like, uh, allowed her to sink so close to Portsmouth that eventually she was raised. Exactly. We were very lucky in that respect. All these cannons came up with the Mary Rose. And if you look closely, you can see inscriptions on there. This is in Latin. And it says, Henry VIII, by the grace of God, King of England and France, Defender of the Faith, Lord of Ireland, and on earth, Supreme Head of the Church of England. That's what it says on there in Latin. That's what it says on there in English. And these, with Henry's coat of arms, and Henry VIII, uh, Henry VIII Rex. I mean, just touching these, to think that these went down all those years ago and came back up intact. HR8 and the Tudor Rose. Now, you might wonder what went on in that little cabin. Well, it was actually the barber surgeon's cabin because he'd not only cut your hair, but he'd also cut your leg off if it needed cutting. This is quite an incredible exhibition. Incredible because I've traveled all over the world and seen many museums and other places that conserve history. But what I find so absolutely gobsmacking about this place is that everything here came up with the ship, the Mary Rose, and it's all original. I mean, look over here, for instance. You've got the barber surgeon's chest with all of the, the different bottles and vessels and jugs in there of things that he would use. And some of the, well, look, the needle. And over here, the urethral syringe, because syphilis was rife. And so what they used to do, they used to inject the person with mercury to get rid of it. Needless to say, it didn't work. But you know what? This has now become a mecca for doctors, for, for people of the medical profession. They come here to see how life was like and what they used in the Tudor age. 
What a find, what a treasure this all is. Sniff and tell, it tells of the history of the Tudor age. There is the tar that was originally on there to act as a preservative to the rope and you can to this day still smell the tar. I mean, this is what this is all about. This is a living exhibition, but it's also teaching us about how life was like in the Tudor age. They've made discoveries about the longbow, for instance, that there was a covering of horn, uh, which, which proved more to longbow experts simply through what they brought up with the Mary Rose than they could ever know, unless they had the proof. And the Mary Rose has actually given them the proof. I mean... This was one of the last things to come up when they brought the uh, ship up. It's the cast bronze watch bell. And it was actually cast in the year 1510, a year before the Mary Rose was launched. And they think that the bell was probably made by Peter van der Gein the first of Michelin, that's in Belgium, who also cast bells for Iona Cathedral and Peterhouse College in Cambridge.